Has Mrs. Claus been acting up? Not bringing you enough milk and cookies? There's only one stocking stuffer that's gonna fix her attitude. And that's Tactical Soap. All natural, pheromone infused soap for men and proud channel sponsor of 21 Studios. I'm Anthony Dream Johnson, and I approve this soap. Order now at the link below. Use coupon code 21C for 10% off now. Ho, ho, ho. George Bruno in Orlando, Florida. With the 21 report, kind of a post-game show after the 21 convention for the past four and a half days, talking to CEO and founder of 21 Studios and the 21 convention, Anthony Dream Johnson. What a great convention. Thanks, George. Thanks for Absolutely. having me on the show. Tell me about your initial impressions. Here we are. The room is being emptied out. Yep, yep. Everything's coming off the walls. Things are getting packed up in boxes. People are getting ready to go to the airport. Now that you have a chance to just take a breath, what a are drink. you thinking? And have a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? A couple of different, uh, not so much thinking, pretty burned out, obviously. Uh, you know, emotionally, uh, all this stuff, professionally, just stuff going on. A lot busy, you know, it was, it was crazy or busy, busy. But I think, I think about the, um, I try to reflect on my emotional state at the end of every event. And each event's different. But even in that different, those differences, there's a consistent theme. For me, there's always an element of sadness. I see each event as like, uh, like a living thing that is built and built and prepared and prepared, but then it's born, it lives, and it dies. And so I actually always like to be in the room like the last person and like watch like lights go out and everything kind of go, go out. I remember actually in Australia when I met Mike McNally, there was a moment, and we had a really huge room that year. It was badass. Mm -hmm. And uh, this event reminds me a lot of that event, like a big turning point. That was our first event in Australia, and we had three, the first year we had three events. So it reminds me of that, sadness, but it's not, um, it's not an ugly sadness or a bitter sadness. It's like a beautiful sadness. Mm -hmm. This event was, was unbelievably, it was unbelievably epic and badass. This surpassed even the 10-year anniversary, which was a high mile milestone. I agree. That was my last year. 10th anniversary event was my first year at the event and I will say this was and that was excellent this wasn't just one notch better it was out of the ballpark and everybody and our producer can attest to this in all of the interviews when I asked people what their impressions were everyone was saying it was there was a lot of moving parts a finely oiled machine, people staying on time, getting whisked from stage to studio, and just everything, like there was no, no detail was left unattended to from security. I don't think I even had to hold, like push a door open. There were people at every, people would just see Fuck a shadow it. approaching a door and open a door for me. Mm -hmm. And no door was left to slam. People were, just like little things like letting, like allowing the door to come in slowly oh, yeah. and not just click. We duct tape the, uh, the like ledges on the outside so it's quiet when it closes. Usually. Oh, just yeah. every single detail. Oh, yeah. It was, well, right from the first minute, what I saw was mm -hmm. a auditorium which reminded me of a TV studio. Mm. And have, having been in broadcasting for many years, it just reminded me of a major network studio. Mm -hmm. The work that went into that was amazing. You're a big part of that too. I mean, in terms of the professionalism and the details and everything, you, you, stepped, you stepped the game of our speakers this year. Yeah. They're gonna look better, on, they do look better on camera. Yeah. And the, the final versions, when we edit them, produce them the, the perfect final versions, yeah. those are gonna look awesome. Like that, that extra two, one, two percent was yep. what we need for the speakers, fucking nailed it. It really was amazing. Just little things like doing the hair and makeup and getting people looking good mm -hmm. and rolling the lint and just, yep. you know, I brought in my ear trimmers yeah, for yeah, people, yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. things like that. And even the show, though, you're, you're, I think you're the best host we've ever had by far. 
with full oh, respect, thank you. full respect to our past hosts. Thank you. You're uh, the level of maturity and wisdom and experience that we need for a show like this. Great, thank you. Killed it. It was my it. pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. I noticed a lot of the speakers. They're also on other speaking circuits. They mm -hmm. speak at other conferences and so forth. And it was unanimous amongst the guys that speak throughout the year that this was the most together organized, efficient, effective, the only thing I can say is finely tuned machine that they've ever been part of. We are the terminator of the Manosphere mission of the event. We certainly are. <laughs> You're not kidding. You are not kidding. The way, the way I like to describe it, I was talking to, um, I think one of the volunteers this morning or, or an attendee, uh, I like to treat the attendees and everyone here, not just the attendees, the attendees, the speakers, the staff, everyone, even the crew that, you know, from outside companies and yes. stuff. Everyone like gold and like family. Yeah. To the to the best extent that I can. Yes. They're not literally family, yes. but I try to treat them like I would a cousin, someone I actually I care about bloodline. Sure. And I think that's what shows that's that's part of what makes this event so not just well, run well, right? But feel like it runs well. Mm -hmm. So it's the physicality of it. It is running well, and then it's also like there's actual care and intent with that too behind it. Yes. Technically, it was superior, and I've yeah. worked in multi multi million dollar studios mm -hmm. and here we are in a hotel that you turned into a studio oh yeah the guerrilla warfare guerrilla culture warfare 100 percent. unbelievable there was nothing unprofessional about it as a matter of fact i find it to be even more professional than as a as a watcher of a lot of interview shows and some of the technical stuff this was right up there with everything that i love Oh, we're just getting started, man. It's only 12 years old. I just hit 30. What's on 40? Oh, we're, we're it's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. going to be amazing. And we're all going to really have the is. best hair and the best fucking beards thanks to this guy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. Uh, as far as next year is concerned, you said we're mm -hmm. going to have another one in the States mm -hmm. and one in Eastern Europe. Did I hear you correctly? That's right. Poland will be in July 2019. That is amazing. That's our be our that'll be our first event in Europe in a while, but our fourth event for a 21 con in uh, total. We had our first one in 2010, and then one again in 2011, 2012. So it'll be our fourth European event. So we have a lot of fans mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe, don't we? Yeah. Oh yeah. So all over Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, yeah. I think we'll get all, pretty much all of our European fans are going to go to that event. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. What was your favorite part of the event? Holy shit, that's a good question. Yeah, it's like asking, you know, which one of your children is your favorite kid? I mean, the event literally, as far as I'm concerned, the event's not even done yet. We're, this is the final little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And they even, but even the main conference room, the auditorium, that's, that just got wrapped up now. Uh, it would be a combination of, like, maybe my, my own talk. I really enjoyed, you know, on a personal level doing that mm -hmm. and just fucking digging into it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed Rolla Tomasi's talk. And then I really enjoyed the Redman group the whole day today, there are those episodes. In the barbershop, the the grooming we just did with mm -hmm. the, the shaving, what shave tutorial. That was interesting, yeah. Oh, it was interesting. I love well, I love experimenting at the event with mm -hmm. filming and new speech styles mm -hmm. and workshops and stuff. So mm -hmm. between the panels with RMG and mm -hmm. then your stuff today, mm -hmm. this whole day was like Monday basically the bonus day was like an experiment day. Mm -hmm. And I love doing that. I love experimenting. You feel it was a success? Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. And we'll do it again? I as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. We'll get the barbershop chair, we'll get all that shit. It's going to be badass. Oh, I, I love that. I yeah. love taking risks, especially mm -hmm. when they pay off. And I think yeah. this one really did pay off. Yeah. Uh, about the three sessions of Red Man Group, you feel it went well? Mm -hmm. It went really well, yeah. We had a power issue at one point on the first episode, but mm -hmm. other than that, it was fucking flawless. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew it was going to look badass. I tried telling some of the guys in Red Man Group, the key figures that are on it more consistently. Yes. Uh, you know, Rolo, Richard, Ryan, and uh, Donovan. I tried to amp that up because mm -hmm. I knew, knowing Gugtino, our, our director, so I know this is going to be really badass. I know mm -hmm. that, but he, so, and I knew that they wouldn't quite get it no matter what I told them. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll try to help to set them up. They're not going to get it. Yeah. They saw it, and all of them were like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. But even when I saw it, I was like, damn. So this the optics even... of it were incredible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Te technically, the way he produced it with the budget he had and the timing and the available time to do it, and he set that up on the, on the fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that came out really well. I think that elevated both the convention, our ability to produce content for second parties like that, yes. as well as uh, the Redman Group as itself as a new media entity, a new show. Uh, I knew it would do, it's been a you know Google Hangout online kind of thing throughout the past year we've done it. We've done 
We did 33 episodes before today, 34, yeah. 35, 36. But those episodes are going to elevate it to a new level that's going to trigger the shit out of people that hate us. People that are just not good people. The everyone together <laughs> added a synergy. Yeah. That, and I love the Google Hangout version. Yeah, totally. It's the next best thing to being in person. But being in person was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see flying people in and over oh, yeah. three days just slamming out, you know, like 20 episodes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, I six think, months worth of Red Man groups. What I suspected right before we did it, and I was talking to some of Ryan and some of the guests on it, I was like, I bet we're going to go. We only, these are short episodes. These are 80, 90 minutes. Yeah. Usually we do like two hours plus yes. on the Google Hangout. But I think we got even more content in in a shorter amount of time because it was in person. Mm -hmm. Online, it tends to slow down because it's like switching. There's like delay. You don't know yeah. what's going on. So I was really happy about that. that we got long, fairly long episodes in general. Shorter for Redman Group and what we're used to. But we got even more content. It was faster on the fly. It was responsive. It was mm -hmm. like a live audience, like a TV mm -hmm. show. So that was really fun. And the panel, was, all yeah. three groups were so different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. it's just the diversity of thought, yeah. the, the optical diversity. Mm -hmm. You had young, you had old, you had black, you had white, you had just everything. Bald, and bearded, fat, it was tall, just, short, it, whatever. It was visually interesting. Yeah, it was, it was. I can't wait to watch it. It'll be actually interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how detractors, they, they try to always paint us in a corner. Whatever their particular, mm -hmm. what, whatever reason they hate us, they'll be like, oh, you're a cult, you're this bullshit, you're that bullshit. But the reality is we have real diversity, but genuinely in, in ideas, which is where it matters. Mm -hmm. But even physically, too, you see different races, religions. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an objectivist atheist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we also have hardcore Christians up there, mm -hmm. and we all get along. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then black, white, Jew, Asian, whatever, the f whatever it, right? It doesn't matter. It's ma I, and not everybody agrees with everybody. Yeah, it's But fine. we agreed on having a great show yeah. and being, we believe in free speech. That's right. And we believe in free expression of ideas as yes. well. And that's, that is, I mean, we're, we're, I think, a shining light on that, but that's becoming, becoming, becoming rare today. So for us to put that in that show and, and see that so vividly is going to be really badass. Mm -hmm. I think the internet's going, some of the internet's going to love it, and a lot of it's going to hate it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's expressing that, uh, the freedom of speech and the First Amendment so strongly mm -hmm. among such a diverse cast of characters with, uh, with wild, pretty strange, not strange, but uh, unique personalities too. In addition, yeah. in addition to the ideas, in addition to the diversity of the physicality of it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. That's a really fun little show we got going. I like how the Red Man Group acts as a feeder for everybody's social media outlets mm -hmm. and how everybody's social media outlets act as a feeder for the Red Man Group. They yeah. just kind of feed each other. Yep. We've been trying to nail a podcast. Like the report, I think we're nailing now the interview. The convention speeches we've nailed. But the podcast element we've never quite nailed with 21 Radio. Right. And I think Redman Group is, is the solution to that. Mm -hmm. We're, I think we have to need, with 21 Studios, we need to focus on other content and then empower second party companies like Redman Group to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we just did and fucking nailed it. We certainly did. And you're part of that. You're on the third panel with me. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. I love how we're not an echo chamber. Yeah. It wasn't a bunch of guys lined up, the Redman Group I'm talking about, wasn't a bunch of guys lined up all singing the same exact tune. There was so much diversity of thought up there. And we give people the latitude to express those thoughts as long as it's consistent with the idea of reclaiming masculinity, mm -hmm. manhood. It's important in 2018 and beyond. Men are important. Yeah, hell yeah. And men and women are different. That's right. Men and women are different. <laughs> That's may, he right. rest, may he rest in peace. Proud yeah. of men. You would love. You would have loved me and him, man. You guys were along really well. Mm. Yeah. What about the party the other night? We had a party at Socrates' house. Oh, yeah. Yep. What are your impressions of that? It was the biggest one we ever had there. He was worried the house wouldn't support it. I was like, I bet it will, and it did. Mm -hmm. uh, you did the smoke the smoke workshop out back. Yes. High smoking. That was yeah. badass. Someone was telling me, I was like, oh, you should have been there to learn. I was like, he taught me in person up in Philip, yeah. where he lives. Because they already had that workshop. Honestly, I, I thought I was going to have, seriously, four or five, six people. Yeah. I really did not think it was going to be four and five deep all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That I'm, not was I'm, not, I'm not surprised. And yeah. then everybody at the end 
wanting a picture of me while they're holding their pipe. <laughs> so that was kind of kind of a fun thing. And that's yeah. how organizations grow. And I think everyone yeah. with this organization, we're young enough. I'll speak for other people, not for myself. You're pretty young but, here now. You got you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, twenty years older than you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah I I couldn't believe it. You're, I know you're, it. You're not, you're the young guy. I'm, I'm one of the young guys here. I <laughs> thought I was going to be one of the oldest. Yeah, yeah. But technologically, it's just great how everybody is up to speed mm -hmm. with social media outlets and hashtagging and so forth. And it really, really is uh, a media organization where everybody is their own director of media relations. Yeah. Yep. I think it's great too that we can build it. it I've been, I've built this company since I was 17 years old and uh, I didn't think about it at the time when I started it, but I've been building it in an age when mainstream media is collapsing, which is fantastic. I hate them. And then we're building something actually better that's truthful and focused on reality and facts and reason and open debate in the marketplace of ideas. So it's really it's really fun building it and doing it right in this time where it's so controversial to do it. I think in the future, this company kind of company will be more or less the norm. Yeah. Or at least much, we'll have the, the cultural discourse to be much more slanted in this direction. If this would be controversial, this would be pretty normal, you know? I love how we're getting the message out. You know, in the 60s, mm -hmm. the three biggest networks were ABC, CBS, and NBC. Now mm -hmm. the three biggest networks are YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can add Twitter to that as well. More eyeballs are on mobile devices across the world than there are on televisions. So it's not that big of a deal anymore to get on television because we're reaching more people. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a production company they can hold in their hand. That's right. That's a good way to put it. That's a really good way to put it. I like that. Yeah. And I think we're really good at getting that message out individually and collectively as well. Yeah. What are your hopes and dreams for next year? Next year, I want to have at least 500, 10, 500 attendees between both events. I think we can pull out both events very, very well, even better than this year, which was the best event we've ever done by far. Mm -hmm. we can, so we can have those events at that size without compromising the quality, integrity, and the product itself mm -hmm. and the design. Um, I treat the event as like, a, as, as like a product, almost like a, a physical item. Yeah. And I'm obsessed with making it as best, the best thing I can. I do like helping men. Uh, that is a part of what I do, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's not my primary focus. It's design and product quality mm -hmm. and the service quality. I'm like, mm -hmm. how much how much badassery can I put into this fucking thing? Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for that. And I think I can do that at that size next year, no mm -hmm. problem. And I think we're going to have it too. I like, uh, there was a lot of moving parts this year. Yeah. And everybody played their role super well and didn't deviate Like from an it. orchestra. It was amazing. Yep. I don't amazing. have an instrument. I'm just a conductor or whatever. I just play with the wand, but yeah. you know, it, works, it works pretty well. And there was a good chain of command, too. <laughs> I felt that there was a good respect mm -hmm. for chain of command. There wasn't a lot of like rogue stuff going on. Yeah. And if there was anything that was a little bit deviating, it was corrected immediately. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think my guys, uh, my team, you, you know, the internal team, the AV team, all these guys, they're focused on, they're focused on getting the work done. And from that, I think men fall into hierarchies, and they're, we're pretty cooperative about it. No one's, yeah. We're not a dick dicks about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good to see. And I, I think they used to be more normal back in your grandfather's generation. Yes. Or my grandfather's generation. Yes. So we're bringing that back, and that, that's a good thing. You know, in the military, they say you salute the rank, hmm. not the person. Hmm. And in days of old, when one army would uh, surrender to another, Commanders of opposing armies would meet and salute each other. Yeah. Even though one was surrendering, the the victor would still <clears throat> salute the commander of the army that was surrendering because he was respecting the rank. Damn. That's pretty badass. And I felt that that was happening here. I felt everyone was working with the chain of command mm -hmm. and no one had to repeat themselves. So operationally, uh, I think this was a good test run mm -hmm. for future growth. I, I couldn't put it better myself. Yeah. yeah. We're going to grow a lot next year. Yeah. Uh, we got two events planned, and that's, I think we'll have even more planned in 2020. After Tell that. us about the products that are going to be put out <clears throat> as a result of this event. The speeches, the oh, podcast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. what's going to be happening? 
Well, we're going to amp up our pipeline. So, to, so we, our content goes to the pipeline. So we film it, you know, the first part of the pipeline is filming it right here live. And then after that, we have to edit it, play with it. We have it live during the event now too, mm -hmm. but that's kind of separate. Mm -hmm. So we have to edit it, play with it, perfect it, export it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we put it through the pipeline. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to 21 University first. That's our video platform. Mm -hmm. Right after that, we put our previews on YouTube and BitChute. Mm -hmm. And after that, we put out the full versions on YouTube and BitChute once we get banned. So basically, it's a process of, you know, super premium quality experience and then distributing that out forward onto the internet mm -hmm. over time. And uh, we're going to get probably every single bit of video at this event out for free eventually. That's first, beautiful. first our premium subscribers at 21 University. All these guys here, the attendees, got a one-year mm -hmm. pass for free, included yeah. with their ticket. And after that, we'll put it on the internet to go viral. Um, Wonderful. And on top of that, we're rebuilding 21 University to better facilitate, 21 University to better facilitate all this happening. So it's kind of like um, it's kind of like just a TV show, you know. Mm -hmm. They film it on set, they put it out. Then the movie theaters, you pay a ticket. Then maybe it goes on Netflix and TV after that, stuff like that. So it's a very similar progression of how it uh, distributes outwards in the world. That's quite incredible. And they're going to get. I think now we're we're easily hitting hundred thousand, two hundred thousand views per per speech, main speech. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a big jump from previous years. It used mm -hmm. to be like you know fifty thousand stuff like that. Yeah. So I think next year we'll see speeches, uh, even the bar, you know, the, the tutorial you just gave, that'll hit easily between three channels if we do all three of them, easy 300,000 views. Easily. Qu over a quarter million. Yeah. Bigger than a mega church by far. Uh, Bigger than a football stadium or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I expect also we'll get at least one or two speeches out of this event with over a million views on YouTube. Easy. Interesting. Yep. Your speech, your keynote. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Oh, yeah. Where did that inspiration come from? It was moving. Mm. It was powerful. The finale was quite incredible. Thank you. Quite incredible. And the I'm an observer of the audience as well as the person on stage, and I was looking at faces, mm. and they were mesmerized. Damn. I couldn't see them. The lights were mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know how bright it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to go far. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. I think it's going to go far. Thank you. Well, it's the end of several days of a convention. And I want to see you here in 2019. It's going to change your life. You're going to be in for a treat. You've been putting it off for a couple years. Now it's time to get off that couch and take action on the things that have inspired you. This is George Bruno with the 21 Report with Anthony Dream Johnson, CEO and founder of 21 Studios and the 21 Convention. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks, George, for everything.